Okay, welcome everybody to episode two. This is video two in uh, the introduction to the Blender game engine series. Um, this is our level called the Bunker. And this is how we left it at the end of video one. Uh, so there we go, we've got our room assets and we've got a door as well, we've got light. So uh, now we're going to create some animation for the door. So if I go back to solid mode so we can see these all clearly, hit A to um, select nothing. And I'll actually start, there we go. <clears throat> I've started the uh, screencast keys so you can all see what I'm pressing. So. Let's select the door and the door frame. So I'll do it again if I hit A to select nothing. Click to select a mesh, hold down shift and click again and again. So we've got those three selected. And now what we can do is hit uh, the slash key on the number pad and that will hide anything that's not selected and center the view <coughs> on wherever we have got selected, which is the door. So I know which way the door is going to open from uh, which side the hinges are on. If you see that little orange dot there is on this side of the door. So that's the direction that the doors are going to open. So I'll pick one door and here's our timeline down here. If we right click and drag, we can see the uh, cursor moving along the timeline and you can see the frame numbers down here moving along as well from zero to whatever. So if we uh, go back to the start, which is frame one. And what we're going to do is insert a keyframe there while the door is closed. So we're going to hit I on the keyboard. It brings up this uh, menu and we're going to just pick rotation. Okay, so we just had a rotation keyframe there. And then on that frame, let's say, let's say frame 35, we're going to add a keyframe for the open door. So we need to rotate the door around the Z axis, which is the blue one. So what we need to do is on the keyboard, we can hit R, Z, and then see the doors rotating. Now I want what I want to do is I want to leave the snap on. You can see how it's opening in increments, degree increments. We want to leave that on uh, for the time being. So if I need to reset this, I can get it back to zero there really quickly. So I'll just say, should we, should we open it 90? We'll open that one 90. So I'll click on there to, um, to create that movement. And again, we need to go I, and add a rotation keyframe to that. So now if we go right click and hold on the timeline, we can drag between those two, between one and 35. So that's one door opening. So that's that keyframe. We're gonna do the same thing for the other door. So we'll select that door and we need to add a starting keyframe. So hit I and the rotation. And we're gonna add our keyframe in. <clears throat> this one, uh, we're going to go up to 40 and do the same kind of thing. So we're going to go R, Z, and we're going to rotate that one. We're going to go, let's see, let's go to, let's go to 80 instead. So it doesn't quite go to 90 because it, it, it'll look too mechanical if they both open that exactly the same way. So we're going to put that on 80. So click and again hit I. I'll put a rotation keyframe in there. So if we play this back, you see both doors open. Uh, the what I've called the right door, which is actually on the left, uh, stops a little early at 35, and then this one goes on to 40. What I want to do is I want to take it, I want this one to have a little bit of a bounce. So what it's going to do is we're going to go to frame 35, we're going to go R, Z again, and we're going to take it a little bit further, maybe to there, let's see, to there, and we're going to add a keyframe 
in there. So I'll just hit I and I'll hit another rotation keyframe. So what that's going to do is, there we go, it gets a little bit of a, a bounce action, it just comes back a little way <clears throat> and looks a little bit more natural. So we can play that through. There we are. Okay, so I'm happy with that as it is. So that's uh, animation done on doors. So we can hit A to select nothing again. We can hit the um, slash key on the number keypad to bring back everything else. So there we go, we've animated our door. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same with the lamp. We're going to animate that. And to make this easier to see, shall I, uh, shall I do the actual mesh as well? Oh, I think we'll just actually do the lamp. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, with the lamp selected, we're going to go Shift D to duplicate it. Then I'm going to hit the uh, right mouse button to bring back the, uh, the movement widget. And we've still got the grid on, which is good. We're going to move this. We've still got grid snapping so that it's in the middle of this section here. Um, we're going to go to textured mode so that we can see both of those. There we are. And now with this one, we're going to go to its properties and we're going to change its color. Now because we did uh, a Shift D, there's two, two ways basically to copy an object. You can do Alt D which creates a, a linked copy which means that if we change the color or, or the energy of one lamp it will affect all of the lamps that have been copied from it. Or we can uh, do what I've done here, which did Shift D, which is um, a discrete copy, a, a separate copy that's not linked. So I'm going to call this one Flicker. There we go. And we're going to animate this one. Uh, we're going to use the same 40 frame uh, scale so that it matches uh, the door. Um, so there we go, we've got that single copy. Called it Flickering. Or flicker. So uh, yeah, we're going to add some keyframes to this. What I'll do is I'll hit in the timeline, I'll hit the uh, middle mouse button, move that along, and then scroll wheel up to increase uh, how many frames we can see at once. Okay, so we'll go to frame one with the light selected. We'll go, and uh, we actually need to be over here in the lamps properties, and the energy is what we're going to be keyframing. So if I put my cursor in the energy box there and hit the I key, we've now got a keyframe for that energy level. And if we go, say, to frame 8 by right-clicking on it, um, we can alter that. We can, what I'll do is I'll put another keyframe in there at that rate so that the light stays constant for those eight frames. So again, with my cursor over there, hit I to keyframe again, and then frame nine, again, keyframe, cursor over there, we'll go to zero, and I to put keyframe in there. So there we go. Our lamp now switches off at frame nine. So about frame, let's see, about frame 14, we want to bring it back again. But if we just um, put the energy back to three there, it'll fade up from this keyframe. So if we want it to stay off, we need to put another energy zero keyframe in at 14. So we'll do that. So with the cursor over the energy box, I, let's keyframe that. And then 15, we'll go energy three, and I, keyframe that. So. It goes on, there, off, there, stays off, and then goes back on at 15. And now I want it to, to fade um, to about 21. So click on frame 21, and we want to go from energy 3 down to energy 0.5. We don't necessarily want to go to 0, but just to 0.5, maybe. And you can see our doors moving there in the background as well. So there we go, on, off on again. Uh, oh, and I forgot to set a keyframe, didn't I? Okay, so frame 21, let's say. Um, 
energy 0.5 and keyframe at this time there we are so you can see when you get a keyframe you get an, a, a yellow line here so you can clearly see where they are okay so that's okay so that's going on off on fade and then 22 I want it to be full bright there we go and keyframe that again um, you don't have to follow on exactly what the light levels that I'm doing here you can do your own and 23 I want it off completely keyframe that and then up to about let's say 32 I want it to fade up to 3 again. So I'll see what that looks like. Yeah, that's okay. And then 36, let's put a keyframe in there. 37, let's turn it off again. 38. And let's let's say 39 we go back to 3 again okay so let's see what we've got and we can play that um, actually the uh, animation is set by default to start at 1 and end at 250 so if we click in there and put in 40 then it'll just show us the range that we've got there we go so there we are we have our flickering light which is great okay so all our animation uh, is now done uh, I'm going to save the file um, and now we're going to start to build uh, a room in our bunker which is the best bit so I'm going to deselect that, I'm going to hit B, uh, I'm actually going to turn off back face colouring so we can see everything. I'm going to hit B to box select, I'm going to select all of our assets and make sure the grid snap still on and just move them away slightly. Oh and I missed one didn't I? So we'll move that on its own. Um, if it's not selectable um, there we go. We can. If it's not selectable because we're looking at the the, the back face of it and, and you can't actually see it, then if we turn off textured solid and just go to uh, regular solid mode, um, you'll be able to select it again. So we'll move that back to there where it wanted to be. Um, leave these on uh, textured solid, I think, and then we can start to build uh, a base room to start from. So um, I'll take my corner. I'll hit Shift D to duplicate it. Right click to deactivate that and then move that there. Let's actually move it in front here like that. Uh, so we're going to need four of these. So Shift D that one there and rotate Z and if I rotate in the increments and we know that that's 90. You can see on the grid that it's, it's rotating 90. So again, we need, we can select both of those, Shift D, move those to there, R, Z, and make sure we rotate them 90 by, uh, there we go, checking on the grid, there we go. And now we need, is it this one? No, it's this one, which is the single ball. So Shift D, duplicate that, bring that down to there. Uh, actually that one is set ready to go in there and duplicate it there rotate Z there we are and shift select that one shift D duplicate right click R Z there so we've got a, a room it's actually a dead end we're gonna we're gonna fix that in a second and we need a floor section as well shift D bring that over and put that in there now there we have a basic room it's not lit yet let's put a, a lamp in it um, and this 
is a common problem that you'll come across in Blender. What we've got there is the widget is actually covering over the light, so it's difficult. We could select the light as well, but it would be difficult to select both, you see? Um, yeah. So uh, what you can do there is you can disable the actual movement widget. If you hold control and space, it'll get rid of that. Okay, so you can we can grab that cylinder and shift select and grab the lamp as well. And then to bring that back, it's just control space to bring it back. So we want to duplicate our lamp and bring it into our level and go to textured mode to be able to see it. There we go, a nice dim light. Um, so what will we do next? Uh, we'll add uh, a corridor. So instead of this piece, we'll get rid of that piece. We'll add another floor in. So Shift D, add the floor in. Bring that Shift D, that piece. We want one of those corridors. Okay, attach that there. Uh, Shift D again to make another one. Select both. Shift D. There we are. So we've now got four corridors leading off. So we'll, we'll add um, another light. Shift D to duplicate. Move that into our corridor. Okay, so we've got uh, two lights now. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, should we put a door in there as well? Probably not at this stage. What I'm going to show you is uh, a new feature in Blender uh, which is new for 2.71 which is a basic um, almost like a first person view setup we can if we zoom in so that we're kind of over the level uh, if we hit um, shift F that gives us uh, like a mouse look an instant kind of mouse look and we can use the WASD keys to move around and you, I don't know whether you can see it but there's a, a little cross in the center of that screen um, I'll put it over something light so you can see it there you go so we can move around in here and another thing we can do is if we hit tab it will actually give us a, a first person perspective and actually stand us on this floor so that we can move around okay <clears throat> now if, if this is choppy on the, on the playback it's because I'm running the uh, screen recording at the same time. Yours won't be. Yours will be nice and smooth. So we can we get a kind of a first-person cheat here in that we can move around. The problem with it is, is that there is no collision on this. So if we go outside the bounds of our room, we'll just fall away. And if you're an old uh, PC game player like me, that tended to often in old games as well you, you, you know there's a potential for you to fall through the map and just keep falling so there we go we've covered uh, animation we've covered the um, the quick mode uh, first person which I'll do again just to, to show you how it works shift and F lets us uh, look around with the mouse and then the W A S D keys which are familiar to any gamer will get us forward, back, left and right. And then if we hit tab, it'll put us inside the room. Now I know there's no roof on this room yet. We can do that in the next uh, next section and when we start to build the bunker. But you can see that we've got something coming together there. And um, yeah, so that's it. This video is a little shorter, but I just wanted to cover the animation separately. So uh, that's that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll come out of that. We'll, we'll save this in its current state and uh, we'll move on to video 3 which is the uh, uh, player setup let me just check in my menu yeah video 3 is player setup proper player setup uh, and then we'll look at creating the rest of the bunker so uh, I'll see you then bye for now